Welcome to the Cary Systems Technical Institute video training series. This program will review the DOORS 32 DOORS for Windows software basic installation and configuration. For proper installation and configuration of the software, please view the modules in the order listed. This will ensure that the information needed for programming will have been created and is available. Modules 1 through 9 will guide you through the installation of the software onto the host PC and configuring the hardware and operating parameters for proper programming and operation. Modules 10 through 16 review additional features used for basic system operation, communication between the host PC and controller network, and manual control of the doors, inputs, and outputs. The presentation consists of 16 modules. This is module 12 of 16, view controller status. Controller status provides a snapshot of the current configuration of the controllers on the network. You can view one selected controller or all controllers. Open the setup system window from the icon in the toolbar or from the setup drop down menu and select system. Then click on the controller status tab. The controller status is displayed by selecting one controller and clicking the status button for that controller status, or click the stat all button for the status of all of your controllers. Use the scroll bars to step through all of the status information and all controllers. The door name List the text name assigned to each door, and the address lists the individual controller door addresses. The online column identifies the controller's online status. Online means the controller is actively communicating with the network. Offline indicates the controller is powered off or disconnected from the network or not requested by the operator. The controller type identifies the controller model and configuration, whether it is a PXL250, P or W, a 500 or 510, P or W, an entry guard controller, if a satellite board is installed, and if it is configured as one or two doors. The ROM revision column identifies the controller's firmware revision. And the RAM configuration identifies the controller's RAM size. RAM size correlates to the number of users that can be assigned to that controller. The events users in memory columns list the number of events currently stored in the controller. The maximum of controller events is 3,640. The users in memory list how many users are stored in the controller's memory. This number varies depending on the model of the controller. The date and time columns list the date and time the controller status information was collected. This is the time and date of the controller's internal clock and calendar. It should be accurate to the current local time and date. The cold and warm resets column lists the number of times the controller's power has been cycled off and on. The number of cold resets can grow quite large in an older system that has had a lot of service. The warm resets list the number of times the controller's microprocessor reset itself. Zero or one are okay. More than one needs to be investigated in the warm reset column. All of these numbers will reset to zero if the controller's RAM is reset. A post fail lists the number of times the controller's power on self test failed. This is indicative of a RAM or controller power issue. One is okay. More than one needs to be investigated. The Access Enabled column identifies if the controller's reader is currently turned on, enabling access control, or off, disabling access control reading. 
the reader type column lists the type of reader connected to the controller. Proximity or Wiegand, and none will indicate an entry guard, telephone entry unit, or there is a problem with that reader and controller communication. The door status and door lock columns indicate the state of the door status switch on the door at the time the controller status was read. The door lock column lists the status of the door lock at the time the controller was read. Controller status was read. The open door time lists the number of seconds a door can be held open before a door held open alarm is generated. And the door unlock time lists the number of seconds that a door's lock relay will be active following a valid access request. This information is reflective of what was programmed in the doors tab of setup system. And it cannot be edited in this window. The door unlock time zone lists the unlock time zone that has been assigned to the door. The first person in column lists the value assigned to that door if first person in has been enabled. The door forced output and door held output columns list the output where a door forced alarm will be directed or a door held open alarm will be directed. And the primary and auxiliary request to exit columns list the action taken by the controller when a primary or auxiliary request to exit signal is received. All of these values come from the Setup System Doors tab and cannot be edited here. Go to the Doors tab, change the values there, save them, then do another controller status to see the new values in this screen. This concludes Module 12 of 16, View Controller Status.